So standard setting, uh, you can do a simple workshop and help you to get experience with this. And this is usually done by defining the process. That means uh, what are the performance standards that you want to set? Make sure that everybody agrees on it with the various level of students. You must make sure it's fair that the assessment evaluates the student's performance and it is the student's performance that you're evaluating and not anything else. And that means it does what it says it does. And it should be across all and it's level playing field for all learners and not just for those who have got better understanding of the language. We have seen that happen uh, when we use foreign exams, which Anglo-centric for students who may not be that proficient in the English language. Consistency is very important, reproducibility, and you must reduce subjectivity. Your items in the exam must be very, very clear. And this is where the, the expert review panel will review it until it is very, very clear before it's passed to be used, in this, especially in summative exams. And alignment, you must be making sure that the exam is aligned to the learning. So the Engoff method is the borderline where you make sure that they have reached that. Another method is the holistic review method. And this involves reviewing overall student performance by an expert team and is used for performance-based assessments and portfolios. Uh, the bookmark method we talked about, the borderline group is very important to define who the borderline group. And this is where experienced experts who are examiners will be able to say that this is the borderline group and this particular uh, exam question, the borderline group will definitely fail. And then you can, based on that and the probabilities, this, uh, develop the cutoff point. Uh, the, so the, the Engoff method is quite, quite a reasonably popular method. Uh, I've been involved with it. It requires an expert panel selection, that means experts, and they review each item, each assessment item. If you've got 50 multiple choice groups, and each one of them will be reviewed with a probability estimation that the borderline candidate, what's the probability that he will pass this or fail this? So, and then from which you do an average calculation and then you come back and you discuss the cutoff point and you refine it if need be. The holistic method is a little bit more qualitative in the sense that you get uh, student responses are obtained and then the panels review the sample of this, all the responses and make a holistic judgment. So it's a bit of a qualitative dependent upon their opinion by trying to keep it as standard as possible. They have a group discussion and a consensus building, and then they decide on the descriptors for the various categories for grading. So we can do this by having this simple workshop that each of you take a set of assessment items, works in groups of four or five as experts, and then go through the Engoff method uh, and then estimate the probability for each, and then at the end of it, develop a cutoff point. For the holistic, we could just gather together a group of uh, um, experts and discuss a sample of, uh, say, uh, grade A answer, grade B, C, D, and then look at the uh, qualitative comments, and then from which set the standards and provide the descriptions. Now here again, as I said, in generative AI can help with writing up all of these descriptors as the uh, individuals discuss, the experts discuss, and you get a speeding up of the process. So there is a challenge. This is obviously the expert bias, your, your time constraint. Uh, sometimes you do not reach consensus, and if you have a bunch of experts, you have very few, can be quite complicated and uh, uh, difficult, so you need a good leader to help facilitate the whole discussion, and uh, it needs a step-by-step -step guide and training, and uh, that's where the use of a facilitator is very important. So, for implementation of standard setting in an institution, you require preparation of faculty members to ensure they're trained, and the training must be provided, and they can then start off with a pilot implementation. It's, it is resource intensive requires time and effort so there are various uh, papers and references that are available uh, i'm happy to share with them about standard setting and uh, validating and psychometric validation i hope you have enjoyed this uh, lecture and workshop and good luck with your standard setting assessment design 
development and marketing. Goodbye.